Hey guys, this is me on my way to my a &E shift and this is right before I got changed into my scrubs. Here I am, hello. Um, it was quite a busy day, I had a 12 hour shift and it was quite chilly in a &E, so one of the receptionists gave me a hot water bottle. Good morning, I actually have my ring light in my room. Oh my god, it sounds so crouchy. I have my ring light in my room so I just switched it on so that you guys can see me better because it is so early that it is still dark outside. Um, as you guys saw, I had an a &E shift. I thought I would just talk to you guys a bit about what it's like to work in a &E because it is really, really cool. It's such a fun job to do, um, but it can be also really stressful because it is the busiest place, I think, in all of hospital. Um, and a lot of patients walk in through the door and there's a lot of triaging and you have to, as you're like the first person who sees a patient, you have to come up with a diagnosis, which is really, really cool. And obviously the reason why I say it's really cool is because as a, like a scientist, you want to kind of come up with a theory and then test your theory or your hypothesis and see if it's correct. And you do that with all the investigations that you do um, in a &E. There's also the negative sides to it. So when you're like at that forefront in a &E, I do feel like that's where you staff receive like the most abuse um like verbal abuse sometimes even physical abuse from patients which can be so hard and i think that you need to be quite a strong character to work in a &E. so your knowledge needs to be so broad because you need to cover so many topics you see literally absolutely anything that can come in and you need to be able to safely direct that person either to another healthcare um specialist let's say someone's come in with a cough I need to decide if that cough is serious enough that is compromising the oxygen supply to their body or um, if it is okay for them to go home and manage it and then come back um, to hospital if it gets worse. So there is a lot to it and it's really, really fun. The shift pattern is another thing that loads of people ask me about. You can pretty much work whatever hours in the day. So in the a &E department that I work in, you can do a shift from on a weekday from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. Um, the next shift starts from 12 until 9 p.m. And the shift after that starts from 3 p.m. until midnight. And then the night shift starts from 9 p.m. until 8.30 a.m. On the weekends, they have other shifts, so it will be 8 till 8, so 8 a.m. till 8 p.m., 12 till 12, 12 a.m. till 12 p.m., and then 2 till 2, um, so that's 2 p.m. till 2 a.m., and then the normal standard day shift, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and 9 p.m. till 8.30 a.m., and believe it or not, because you're so busy, you don't get tired. When you are covering wards, obviously there's less to do at night time, which is why wards are less staffed at night time and that is deemed uh, more safe um but in the a e department that's when everyone needs to kind of be um seen too fast and to some extent sometimes stabilized and if they're not stabilized then they can go up to intensive care or go to a ward that has um, a lot more monitoring like the cardiology ward has a lot of cardiac monitors so those are things that you see in movies that you know in the background are like beep beep um that is basically monitoring your heart and not everyone needs a heart monitor so for example if someone's coming with a urine infection um and they are confused with it but their ECG, so their heart trace is fine, they don't need to be on a cardiac monitor. So that's why a lot of the things that you see on TV as a doctor, you're just like, I don't understand why you have a fake heart monitor on someone um, for that particular scenario. Um, so yeah, it's really, really cool, can be really intense, and 
always keeps your knowledge like on a 10 10 because you need to be able to pretty much think of any scenario in a and &E and it covers every single specialty so psychiatry, gynecology, obstetrics, orthopedics, surgery, um, general medicine so that would be like respiratory endocrinology, uh, renal medicine, hematology, there's so many specialties and you need to be able to have a very strong knowledge in the basics of all of that. This is my finished makeup. I haven't done my eyebrows today because I just wanted a light makeup look for work. Um, because I always get asked, I am using this NYX lip liner and this Clarins Velvet Lip Perfector. And I'm just going to link all my makeup in the description for you guys so that you can see what products that I use because I get so many questions on it all the time. Anyway, let's get dressed for work. So this is my work outfit of the day. This is my new work bag. I love it, it's really versatile and also I can just use it for other things and it's nice and like mid price range, I think it was like £150 which I think is a lot of money for a work bag but also something that I'll use forever. My last work bag was from Pretty Little Thing and I used it until it was ratty and it was like £20 so I'd rather something that looks nice in like a few years time. Um, really like it, I will link both of these in the description for you guys. And let's get off to a day of work on the ward. So on my drives to work, I usually love listening to a podcast. I listen to the diary of a CEO. And then after ward rounds, I come and sit down at the desk and do a lot of jobs, which involves calling people, which you guys can see there, specialties, trying to get numbers to get through to the right department, booking scans, etc. It can be quite busy, but I love so it. So it is 7.30 in the morning. I need to leave for work in half an hour. But before I go, I just thought I'd quickly show you guys some of the things that I've bought recently, some of which I've worn on Instagram and you guys have just been asking me, where did you get this from, where did you get this from? So I thought I'd share it here and just share the links down below for you guys to just shop it easier. And also some of the things that I recently got that I wanted to give you guys like a review on. First thing I got are the new Apple AirPod Maxes. Um, they're really cool in that they come in this case. Um, I got the silver ones and then I got mine engraved as well. So it says Seppi at the top of it there with like a bunny um, emoji and then it looks like this and then you can extend it down um, like make it longer or shorter if you want and then it has these buttons on the side that um, one of which is for noise cancelling you can switch it on or off and then this other second button here this one is for you to be able to go forward and backward to skip songs and it just is a multifunctional um, button which is really good um, the first thing I would say on review of these because I've worn them twice to the gym now is when you run I wouldn't say they stay firm on your head like you do need to keep adjusting them a few times which is one of the main reasons I bought this I already had AirPods and AirPod Pro Maxes and I wanted something that would just stay on stay in my ears and um, because the AirPod Pro Maxes would always fall out so I couldn't run with them so I wanted overhead headphones and I thought that these ones were really good because I read loads of really good reviews on them so they do stay on your head but you do still need to keep adjusting and I thought they were just stay on my head. Part of the reason could be because they're quite heavy, loads of people have said that they're quite heavy, that might be why they move, if they're a bit lighter they might just stay. Um, but in general I wouldn't say the adjustment bit is annoying. The second thing I would say is that they are £550, so they're a lot of money for headphones and I think I was kind of just, because I was spending so much money, expecting something amazing from them. and. I don't know if they're necessarily amazing. Um, I feel like the sound could be a bit louder um, and the noise cancelling isn't completely noise cancelled. I feel like it gives you a similar noise cancelling to the AirPod Pro Max. So my final verdict is I wouldn't repurchase these but I hope that they last me at least like five years because I've spent £550 on them. My AirPod Pro Maxes have lasted me about four years and they were about £200. And 50 pound or something so value for money I would say go for the AirPod Pro Maxis if you don't run um, because my only issue was that they were popping out of my ear when I run next up is a couple of bits from ASOS the first one is this kind of jumper dress 
um, I thought it was quite cool. I got it for work. You guys would have seen me wear it to work um, earlier in this vlog. And I think that it's really comfortable, it's quite warm, it's good for this weather. And it's one of those things where because it's an all-in-one, the shirt is like literally attached, you can't separate it. It makes it really easy to throw on for work. So I really recommend this one. Also from ASOS I got, um, this is Topshop from ASOS, this black shirt dress. It's backless. Sorry, it's not a dress, it's just a black shirt. It's backless and then it's got this little tie that you can tie around your waist and buttons to do up at the front. Um, I would say this is again quite versatile because I could style this with a white polo neck underneath and then this shirt on top and um, either work trousers and go to work with it or jeans and cool black shoes and go to lunch with it or you could wear it in the night time with a leather skirt which is what I was going to do on the weekend but the place I was going to was a bit more formal so I was scared that I would get dress coded because it literally has a dress code and so I didn't end up wearing it but yeah you could wear it for a night out as well and it's really really cute um, so I liked this one as well. From Salvages I literally got this parcel yesterday in the post and I just opened it up um, it is this Cult Gaia um, sweater Casala knit. Um, this is what it looks like. It is stunning. Let me undo these sticky tapey things. I literally had to go and cut off the things that were covering up the gold chains. But yeah, this is what it looks like. It's got really poofy sleeves. And it feels really soft, I can't lie to you. I thought that this would be so cute with some blue jeans and some trainers just for like spring to winter to spring transition. I like the colour on it and I just like the way that the sleeves go quite poof and then the waist is quite cinched in. I'll have to try this on and see how I like it. Um, but it is quite pricey so it's one of those things that will have to be in my wardrobe for many, many years. Um, but I feel like I'm getting to that point where I'm realising that investing in more expensive stuff that will last me longer is more important um, for some pieces rather than um, getting the fast uh, fashion version of it. And then I thought I'd show you guys this set that I wore earlier in the vlog. It is from Jaded London. I put it on my Instagram and I got so many questions about it um, when I wore it out to May Hills. Loads of you guys were like, where is this set from? So this is what the top looks like. It's almost like bikery vibes cinched in. You'd have to wear a strapless bra with it, so bear that in mind. Um, and you can kind of adjust, you can adjust the waist bit with these buckles so you can make it tighter or looser if you want. And then it's got these matching trousers and these are kind of more cargo-y style, I would say. Um, they look like this, they are straight leg at the bottom and then with those ties on the side and then this is what the back looks like as well. I feel like you could wear this with absolutely anything. The top I think is a bit harder to style by itself just because of the material. I think like if it was a different material then it will be easier to style but yeah you could just basically wear it with different forms of denim I feel. Um, and if you guys have any other ideas, let me know in the description. But I like the way it looks together. Um, the trousers, I think, if you were to buy it by itself, would defo be easier to style. And that's everything I want to show you guys that I bought recently. And I'm going to end this vlog here. Before I end this vlog, I just want to draw your attention to what is going on in Iran. There is a huge movement since the death of Masa Amini to try and draw attention to what has been going on there and Iranians all over the world and from within Iran have been spreading the message of equality and freedom and women's rights as well as human rights. Unfortunately, in Iran, the people who have been peacefully protesting are now being one by one by one sent off for execution. Um, they haven't been allowed lawyers in several cases or have been beaten to give false testimonies. So you will read like these testimonies online of people saying, um, of the, the person going up for execution, where it might say that they've done a crime, but multiple witnesses to um, the scenario of what happened will uh, testify online that that wasn't the case, but there's no option or opportunity for these people to have a lawyer to speak up in court or to have witnesses. So what is going on is honestly evil and there are multiple ways that you can help. One of the ways is just spreading the message and talking about it and reading up on it and being well informed. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you guys. Thank you again for your support. I'll see you next time. Bye!